so MLEs carry over to the estimation of the parameters. For uh, the normal uh, error regression uh, model, uh, the normal error regression model. is uh, simply this. Now, uh, <clears throat> guys, let's, uh, let's go through and just uh, so there's no misunderstanding. I want to be very, very thorough on this video because uh, simply of its importance. Uh, the Y sub I is the observed response for the ith trial. Um, the X sub I is the, uh, the level of the predictor. And we talked about this earlier because at each level we assume that we have normal distribution uh, with equal variance, uh, where the mean response uh, is, is, you know, the center of the distribution. Uh, so the uh, X sub I, I, I define that as just the, the level of the predictor on the, uh, the ith trial. Um, the beta 0 and the beta 1 are the things that we're most interested in here, because those are the parameters of the model. Uh, and then the errors are something that we assume to be, uh, I'm going to put a, one of the classic Darbro thought boxes here, uh, we assume these things to be independent and uh, we uh, assume those to be normal, dis normally distributed with uh, mean zero and of course uh, uh, variance sigma squared. Uh, all that tells us this part is that each at each particular level let's just choose a arbitrary level here and we've got our model here uh, at each particular level of x sub i uh, we have a mean response and then the values of y sub i at that particular level uh, are uh, normally distributed uh, with the with, uh, particular variance. Now, if I take this and rotate it, uh, you know, I'm still going to get the normal model. So in the center I have the mean response for y at that particular level and then we have standard deviation sigma uh, that's consistent at each of at each of these levels. So, so that's really uh, uh, all I'm I'm talking about there. So let's just dive in uh, head first and uh, you know look at an example. And um, let's say given the following data. Uh, let's go twenty five. In 5512 and 3010. Um, let's hope this works out okay. I haven't calculate the likelihood. Important word there, okay. Calculate the likelihood value uh, for the parameters beta 0 uh, equals 0, beta 1 equal 0.5, and the variance is equal to 9. So guys, clearly our standard deviation uh, is equal to 3. Now, the first thing that I would want you to do uh, here is to think about the, um, you know, the ith response. So we have three levels that we're investigating.
Need some music in the background, people. And what we're interested most of all in first is to find the mean response. And um, I forgot what our betas are. Uh, so really, this is just a matter of um, uh, putting, I'm going to put the zero there just Uh, putting the X uh, in this model. So, uh, guys, clearly the mean response uh, here would be 10. Uh, the mean response for this would be 27.5. And the mean response here would be 15. Now, let's investigate this just a little further. So, what we're saying here is at uh, when our level is 20, and we've got our regression. I should have gone through the origin because we have uh, beta zero zero. Uh, we have normal distribution where the mean response uh, is equal to 10. And the standard deviation uh, is equal to 3. So we can, uh, you know, get into this a little bit more. I mean, and we can say the distribution of the y sub i's at this particular level will have mean 10, standard deviation 3, so one standard deviation above the mean will be 13, and one standard deviation below the mean will be 7. So we know that about 68% <coughs> of our y sub i's using the 68, 99.7% rule that you guys are probably teaching to your, to your students in, in high school, uh, will uh, fall between there and there. Now, <clears throat> what we're looking at is we're, in this situation, focusing on the y sub i, which is equal to 5. So that's going to be about right here someplace. Now, here in a minute, we're going to talk about the density. So the density of 5 is just going to be the height, whoa, <laughs> is just going to be the height of the, well, I can't get it to work here, guys. It keeps wanting to do wacky stuff on me. Uh, you guys aren't seeing this good thing. So it just turns out to be the height uh, of, of that line right there, the density. And, um, you know, we're going to talk about that uh, uh, a little bit more. We'll talk about it actually a lot more. Okay. Now, two ways uh, to calculate the density. And one of them I think is easy, and one of them, well, actually, both of them are easy, but one of them's uh, uh, a lot easier than the other. Uh, one way is just to use R. And there's a function called dnorm, uh, and it, uh, the first thing we put in is the value at which we want to calculate the density, and then we put in the mean and the standard deviation uh, of, the, uh, of the distribution. Uh, obviously, norm implies that we have a normal distribution. <clears throat> the second way is we know that we can find the density in a normal distribution simply by uh, looking at the model. One of the toughest things teaching <laughs> like this is predicting the space that you're going to need. All right. Uh, so we could uh, we could use this. Okay. Now this is uh, this is the easiest, uh, but considering where we're headed, uh, I want you to uh, to be able to to use this as well. So guys, the uh, density for the first observation, which is um, 25, can uh, be calculated by taking the 
and my Y value at that level was uh, 5 and essentially the beta 0 minus beta 1 is uh, just going to be the mean response which is 10 let's think about it guys this part right here and I'm going to erase this is beta 1 x sub i so what's going to go right here is 0 what will go right here is 0.5 and then the x value guys please forgive me for this is going to be 20 so essentially what's going to go right here is just 10 so I'm going to use the power of the eraser and I need to allow some space here don't I and uh, of course, uh, this part right here uh, is going to be the standard deviation, which is 3 squared. Now, uh, let's, uh, let's just go ahead and, and take care of this. This is going to be 1 over, uh, uh, well, this is 3, squared of 2 pi. And this is going to be e to the negative 0.5. It's going to make it a little bit easier. And let me grab my calculator. So we've got, uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to just uh, simplify the, uh, the exponent here. So we've got uh, uh, negative 5 divided by 3 <coughs> squared times negative 0.5. Uh, and I get negative 1.389 uh, here. So guys, let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. So uh, again, I'm just going to use the calculator on this. <clears throat> um, silence is deafening, right? And I get uh, 0 0.0332 uh, uh, for this. Now, a much easier approach uh, to this calculation is going to be to use R. And I want to illustrate both to you. So let me uh, get out of here and get this started. So guys, if I bring R up, uh, what I can do, and I can do the density for the first uh, observation using D norm. And of course, I want it uh, at the Y value uh, of 5 uh, with a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 3. So guys, D1 uh, is exactly the same thing that I get uh, using the formula. <clears throat> now, uh, let's, let's go back to back to this. Now the next thing that we know uh, is we know that the likelihood function for n observations is the product of the densities. So uh, we know uh, that the likelihood function and this has again we have the IID uh, property independent and identically distributed. Uh, we know that the likelihood function uh, for n observations and let's just uh, uh, is the product not really sure what I want to say here of the individual densities. All right, so guys, uh, at the end of the day, we can uh, say that the, um, uh, the likelihood uh, given these parameters 
will be the product of and I'm going to use a little different uh, notation here uh, I think it's going to make it easier well I know it's going to make it easier and let's see we're going to get one over actually that will be a negative on it about to run out of space okay let me go to the next page uh, and this is going to be easily uh, let's see what's going on here so we've got the products so we're going to have um, we'll have n of these And then we're going to multiply these terms. We're going to have, uh, we'll be summing up the exponents. So the minus 1 over 2 sigma squared will be in each one, so we could factor it out. But then we'd have to sum up. those I think yes yeah okay good with that now um, so guys the values of of beta 0 beta 1 and sigma square that maximizes this likelihood function whoa the likelihood function uh, are the MLEs Um, which would be denoted uh, for beta 0, that uh, would be beta hat 0, guess sometimes we use b0, and beta hat 1, and sometimes we use beta 1. So these are just the estimates of the parameters. And also, um, I'm not going to make a, a, a too much out of this here because um, uh, we also have that, um, and you know, just just while I'm on it, uh, the the uh, solution to this, which is going to uh, play a role when we get into uh, uh, the uh, ANOVA, uh, uh, is this. So, uh, guys, uh, obviously, uh, these are the same estimators uh, we get uh, when we uh, do um, least squares. Be kind of a wacky procedure, wouldn't it, if we if we did least squares and did uh, MLEs and we got different answers? So, guys, again, uh, by the time you uh, all the smoke clears, uh, we can see that um, for these three numbers, the beta zero is uh, 2.81, and uh, the slope is uh, 0.18. Now, I got to admit to you, I cheated and did these on R, uh, <clears throat> but uh, uh, that's what we get. <clears throat>
Now, this whole MLE process, uh, let's review this. It's been a while. Uh, so let's review the MLE uh, technique and then we'll implement it for, uh, for regression. So uh, let's uh, take a, uh, a mass function. Uh, I don't know which one. Uh, nah, I'll tell you what. Everybody's favorite, right? Let's uh, take a look at the uh, MLE technique for the Bernoulli <coughs> mass function. And uh, we know that F, uh, given our data and the parameter here with uh, B theta, uh, the uh, Bernoulli function uh, uh, looks like it, this. And what I'd like to show I'd like to show that the MLE uh, is nothing more uh, than the mean. So, um, given some data, um, we can, uh, and, and these, these data are uh, independent and identically distributed. Uh, I guess I'm losing my train of thought here. Uh, we can uh, show that the, uh, the ML, uh, let's see, uh, the MLE is the product uh, of the densities. So, um, is going to be um, the uh, now typically I don't use the multiplication symbol but uh, I want to uh, do it in this situation About to run out of space. Yeah. So we get that. <clears throat> now guys, I want to simplify this. Uh, and looking at the uh, first terms, we can see that this is just going to be theta x1 plus x2 plus xn times 1 minus theta, which will be 1 minus x1 plus 1 minus x2, dot, 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 1 minus xn. Yeah, it should be pretty clear, therefore, that we can set up the uh, likelihood function by taking the sum of the x's. So we've got 1 plus 1 plus 1 n times, and then minus the sum of the x of i's. So the first thing we'd want to do is set up the likelihood function, uh, which, uh, which we just, just did. Now our next step uh, is take the natural log of the likelihood function. So the natural log of the likelihood function, which we just created, uh, will be the natural log of sigma sum xi. 1 minus sigma, n minus 
sum xi. Okay, so we can clearly simplify this. using this approach. Um, yeah, we could clean that up, but uh, I, I think that'll be fine. Yeah, let's just leave it like that. Now, uh, guys, our next step is to take the derivative. So I'm going to take the derivative of the natural log of L with respect to the parameter, which in this case is sigma. So the first uh, term, we're going to have uh, use the product rule. So the derivative of first times second, uh, second. So the only thing that's going to apply here will be um, uh, and then the same thing for the next. So the derivative of the first times second, one over. Then we got the chain rule that we got to apply, so we have to, to remember that. So we're going to end up with, uh, uh, let's see, n minus some um, xi over 1 minus theta. So we got to multiply by negative 1 uh, because of the chain rule. So gang, um, this is going to be equal to the sum xi theta minus n minus some xi 1 minus theta. Now the next thing we have to do is set, equal, set this equal to 0. And uh, you, know, I mean, you can see setting this equal to 0 that we're ultimately just going to have the two sides set equal to each uh, other. Well, I would cross multiply. And uh, you see something kind of cool here. So guys, this would uh, clearly lead to the MLE. Remember the MLE is a, an estimate of the parameter so we put that over it. Um, yeah. Which is X bar. Alright guys, uh, that leads us to uh, repeat this process uh, with our regression model. So uh, first of all, we know that the density, as we talked about earlier, at a particular level Uh, is this. So our likelihood function is going to be the product um, of the densities. times dn uh, given x1, y1, 2, y2, xn, yn. 
All right, gang, so uh, the likelihood function, uh, given our data, for the parameters, will be equal to uh, the product. I've already given you this. Um, I'll tell you what, I've already given this to you. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and simplify, uh, give you the simplified form. So that would be 1 over uh, 2 pi uh, sigma squared to the n over 2 uh, e to the minus 1 over 2 sigma squared times the sum of y all right <clears throat> now our next step just as we did before Uh, let's take the natural log of our likelihood function. And the natural log of the likelihood function is going to end up being um, minus n over 2. Natural log of 2 pi minus n over 2. Natural log of sigma squared minus... Uh, I remember the first two. So one over sigma. Okay. Uh, minus uh, one over two sigma squared times the sum yes. All right, gang. Uh, in the Bernoulli example, we had one parameter, uh, theta. Uh, but in this uh, situation, we have uh, three. Uh, but, uh, you know, just, just kind of assuming that this value is given, uh, so that makes it a constant. We have uh, two parameters, so we need to look at the, at the partials. So I need to look at the... Ah, the, the partial of the natural log of the likelihood function uh, with respect to beta 0. And guys, this is going to turn out to be 1 over sigma or uh, sigma squared and the partial with respect to L uh, of, of a, I'm sorry, with respect to beta 1 <clears throat> uh, is 1 over sigma squared uh, uh, gives us this. Now, when we set these equal to 0 and uh, Uh, set it equal to zero and simplifying what we actually end up with it's really easy to remember if you see the bigger picture uh, is we end up um, uh, getting this uh, system uh, of equations. Now, let's go way back when and uh, let's reconsider the least squares approach. If I'm going to uh, think about all the videos that I've put up so far, 
the most important video, uh, I think, is the one I'm doing right now. The second most important video would be on the assumptions. And the third most important video would be on the least squares. <clears throat> so if you remember the least squares, we create this Q. And the goal is to find the minimum value of Q, which is just the sum of Uh, the least squares. Now, <clears throat> this approach led to the normal equations Uh, given this. <clears throat> now, if you think about it, this can be rewritten in matrix form. Now, I'm going to switch and put the right side first, but uh, you guys are clever. You'll, uh, you'll figure it out. And you may have to verify this, but uh, this is nothing too crazy. Uh, leads to this, which uh, clearly, guys, can lead to us finding our values for beta 0 and beta 1 uh, by multiplying uh, these two matrices. <coughs> now, if we return to uh, the uh, this form And if we solve this simultaneously, well, we get uh, some cool results. And, uh, you know, don't get too tore up about this. Really, all we're saying is, is to find our estimates of beta 0, beta 1. Uh, there are numerous approaches. Uh, least squares. I'm going to need to go to another page here. All right. <clears throat> so, guys, uh, pretty thorough uh, illustration there, uh, trying to connect it all together. Um, you know, at the end of the day, if if I'm going to come up with um, the coefficient s or the estimates of uh, beta 0, beta 1, uh, I'm going to use matrix approach, uh, which is going to be something we're going to get into very, very soon. Uh, but right now, uh, you know, if, if, if you have data, uh, whatever it may be, um, You know, whatever it may be, and you want to find uh, beta 0 and beta 1. What are your options? Well, technology, 
is by far the easiest. That's what I teach my 1500 level students. Uh, the TI-84, uh, use R, you know, SPSS, whatever it may be. Uh, but getting into, you know, really learning what's going on here. <laughs> uh, one is uh, least squares. Another is maximum likelihood estimation. And another would be uh, the matrix approach. So gang, that's all I got. Uh, I think this was kind of a long video, but uh, it's an important one. Uh, if things didn't make sense, uh, you might want to consider watching this one again. So uh, that's up to you. All right, take care.